In this lesson, let's take a look at how to create a pivot table. We will group our data in the pivot table by months instead of raw dates, and we'll also create a simple calculated field and add that to our pivot table. First of all, let's take a look at the pivot table data. This is a data representation for a company called Northwind Traders. This is their sales sheet for 2007. And if I take a look at this and all the way to the bottom, I can see we have 2100 records in here. So it's a pretty good sized table. We can see that we have customers listed on the left. We have our salespeople over here. We have an order date for the customer. We have the product that was placed on that order. We have the unit price of the product and the quantity of the product that was placed on the order. The first thing we should do is take our range of data and turn it into a formal table that the pivot table can recognize. The advantage of this is if we ever change the structure of the table, the pivot table will automatically recognize any structural changes that we make. To create a table from this set of data, I'll click in the middle of the data and choose Control T on the keyboard. It recognizes my range of data. I'll click OK and I have my range of data set up as a table. Now to create the pivot table, I will come out, click in the middle of my table. I will go to my insert menu and choose pivot table. I'll click OK and it creates a pivot table on the left with my fields from my table on the right hand side. Notice that it's also created a new sheet in the bottom left corner. If I want to go back and look at my table, I can click on Northwind Sales and I see the table. Let's go back to sheet one. To create my pivot table, I will come over here and grab a field such as my salesperson, drag them to the row labels. I see my salespeople over on the left. I will grab the order date field and drag it down to the column labels and I see all of the order dates listed. I'd like to change these order dates instead of individual dates. I'd like to have them grouped by months. So I will click on one of my dates. I will come up to my options tab and I will choose group selection. I see that months is already selected. So I will go ahead and leave that as months, click OK, and it's grouped as months. If I'd like to turn off my field headers for my column labels and my row labels, I can come up to the Options tab under the Pivot Tables Contextual and click on the field headers to turn that off. Also, if I'm not interested in seeing the grand total over here, I can come up and click on the Design tab under the Tools, and under Grand Totals I can say Off for Rows and Columns. Now to create my calculated field, I will go up to my Pivot Tables Contextual tab, click on Options, and then choose Fields, Items, and Sets. I will go ahead and click on that, choose Calculated Field, and then from my calculated field I'll type a name, and I'll just call this Calc Sales. Under the formula, get rid of the zero, I will choose Unit Price multiplied by Quantity. Simple formula just like you'd create inside the spreadsheet itself. I'll go ahead and click OK and I see it's gone ahead and created calc sales out here and it's put it inside of the values area. If I wanted to take this out I could simply drag it out of the values area back on the uh, set of field lists or I could click on it drag it back into the values area. Now I'd like to do a little quick audit on one of my sample data by coming out here and taking a look at, say, Laura Callahan. Her May result is $142,308.48. Well, if I'd like to see the data that was used to pull this in and represent this inside of my pivot table, I can use what's called a drill down. To drill down, I simply pick a point on my data in my pivot table and double click. It opens up a brand new sheet and I can see all of the data that was used to calculate that value of $142,000. Now if I look at this carefully and eyeball this, I can kind of see that all of these sales, the quantity multiplied by the unit price, don't seem to add up to $142,000. So let's do a little bit of auditing here. I'm going to do my own quick calculations here to check this out. So I'm going to come out here to the right of my unit price and quantity and I'm going to go ahead and just build a formula that calculates the unit price times the quantity in the pivot table. It automatically, because it's a table, it automatically fills in the whole column. I'll come down here to the bottom and I will sum this up using an alt equal sign and I can see that it's only $8,000 which is quite a bit different than the $142,000 I see over here on the main sheet. So what's happened here? What's gone wrong? If I come out here and right click this row uh, for my total here and I choose delete, I can delete the table row. Let's start again here. I'm going to take a look at the unit price and I'm going to go ahead and sum this up, alt equal sign. I'm also going to go to my quantity and sum up my quantity, alt equal sign. And if I take a look at these two values and multiply them together, so I'll take this guy multiplied by this guy, I see that I end up with my $142,000 figure. The problem is apparent that what the pivot table is doing 
is in its grouping process. It's taking the unit prices for the month of May and adding them all up into $378.48, which is wrong. We want the individual values to be totaled individually and then those summed up, and then we'll get the create an correct answer. So I'm going to come out here, right click Sheet 2, done with this drill down i'm going to go ahead and click on delete to take it out click on delete and it removes it i'm also going to get rid of this sum of calc because it's not going to do me any good so i'm just going to take and pull this back in and i think i want to get rid of this calc sales field that i created um, out of my system i don't need it anymore so i'm going to come back up to my options tab and under field items and sets i'm going to click on that once go back into calculated field and then in the name box here, I'm going to click the drop down arrow and choose Calc Sales. And when Calc Sales comes up, I could reconfigure my calculation if I'd like, or I can delete it, which I will do. And I'll click OK, and now Calc Sales is gone completely. To get my calculations to come out correct the way I want them, I'm going to come back to my Northwind Sales 2007 sheet. Click on it, and under the Quantity column, which is the last column on the right, I'm going to right-click Quantity and choose Insert Table Column to the right. It's going to give me a brand new column, which also includes it in the table, which is used in the pivot table. I'm going to go up to the Name column. I'll double-click it, and I'm going to go ahead and type in Sales. Press Enter. And I'm just going to go ahead and do my calculation like I did back on the drill down. I'm going to choose a simple formula. I will say equals this guy multiplied by this guy. I'm going to press enter. Fills it all the way down. Good to go. I'm going to come back into sheet one and I automatically see I uh, don't have my sales field that I included out here. So I need to come up to options and choose refresh. When I say refresh all, I will now see my sales column that I put in a moment ago. I'm going to click on this and drag it down to values. When I do, come out here take a look at Laura Callahan and for her results, I have my correct value $8,000.